In this short video, we'll look at uh, system stability. What is system stability? A system is stable for all bounded inputs. The outputs are also are bounded. So here's an illustration. You have a system G of S, <coughs> and this is the input signal here. Now for all times, this signal, the amplitude of the signal remains within these bounds. Now if the system is stable, you give this input to this system, it's going to give you an output, which is again going to be bounded. So this signal will never cross these two bounds. So essentially that means that the system doesn't blow up. Now the motivation. Now, the minimum goal for controller design is stability. That's the least you can do. In this class, we're talking about closed loop control. So happens that you can take a closed loop control, design a controller in a bad way and make a perfectly good system unstable. Now, there has to be a way to check stability of the closed loop system. Now, this is what this whole uh, video is all about. So the question is, when is a closed loop system stable? A closed loop system is stable if all closed loop poles are in the left half plane. So right here, I have an illustration of the closed loop poles in the complex plane. And all poles are in the left half plane. Therefore, this system is stable. Mind you, these are closed loop poles not just any poles but closed loop poles a system a closed loop system is unstable if there is even one pole in the right hand side so you could have 100 poles in the left half plane and just one pole in the right half plane and the system is unstable a system is said to, to be marginally stable marginally stable also happens to be the condition where you have zero damping if there are closed loop poles on the imaginary axis and all the other poles are stable poles when i say stable poles they are in strictly in the left half plane so with such a system what happens is if you give an impulse input to the system or any input it starts oscillating and remains like that forever so how to determine stability? So everything has got to do with closed loop poles. Closed loop poles are the roots of the characteristic equation of the closed loop transfer function. So you find the closed loop transfer function, find the characteristic equation, find where the roots of the characteristic equation are, and then you can determine stability. Now the question is, is there a way to find where the roots of the characteristic equation are without actually solving the characteristic equation and the answer is yes it's called the Ruth Horwitz criterion so the Ruth Horwitz criterion is a way to find the number of roots a polynomial equation has in the right half complex plane so it's in general not designed or it was not invented for controls systems as such but it was in truth or risk criterion was invented to find the number of poles or number of roots in the right half plane for a polynomial equation now we can use that in controls to determine stability these are the steps that you will use to determine stability the first step is you find the closed loop transfer function you'll determine the characteristic equation and then we apply root criteria. So here's an example. I have a simple system. D is the controller. G is the plant. And this is the closed loop. Here you have the output. Here are the reference input. So D in this case is 3 plus 2 divided by S plus 5S. And G is given by 2 times 5 minus S. Or S minus 5 divided by s times s squared plus 4s plus 25. Now first what we do is find the closed loop transfer function from your uh, block diagram reduction rules 
or brute force method you can find the closed loop transfer function as dg divided by 1 plus dg now we won't substitute these as of yet the characteristic equation is the denominator which is 1 plus dg equal to 0 if you set this equal to 0 it becomes characteristic equation if you don't set this equal to 0 it's the characteristic polynomial and I just substituted now d and g I cross multiplied here to get this term here and then I cross multiply throughout by the common denominator this is the equation I get I expand it and then I collect all terms together so this is my actual characteristic equation now let's apply the root criterion that's my characteristic polynomial I write down a table for each of the powers of s starting with the highest power of s which is s to the power of 4 here then a row for s cube row for s squared s to the power of 1 s to the power of 0 now we fill in these entries here the top row is filled from the characteristic equation like so so this is the coefficient of s4 this is the coefficient of s squared you're skipping one power of s this is a constant term skipping one power of s from s squared so s to the power of 4 s squared constant term similarly the coefficient of s cube here skip one power of s coefficient of s here skip one power of s there's nothing here therefore zero here now how to cal calculate that that is gotten by this procedure here 14 times minus 19 minus 1 times minus 26 divided by 14 right here that's equal to minus 20.85 how about that entry so you go 14 times minus 20 time minus 1 times 0 divided by 14 which is minus 20 well, that's going to be 0 because there's a 0 here and a 0 here so it is 14 times 0 minus 1 times 0 divided by 14 which is 0 we can go to the next one next entry there here same procedure it's 39 minus 39.42 that entry similarly is going to be 0 and the final entry here same procedure minus 39.42 times minus 20 minus 0 times minus 20.85 divided by minus 39.42 which is minus 20 now we look at the first column and count the number of sign changes so this is positive this is positive no sign change this becomes negative one sign change no sign change no sign change so the number of sign changes in the first column is equal to one therefore there is one pole in the right half plane and therefore the system is unstable.